be right back to recess right here on Toon Disney. Um, do you like my cat's mug? This is my favorite cat. So hi everybody, welcome back. Today we will be reviewing Recess, one of my personal favorite shows on the Disney Channel, other than obviously Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> okay, so Recess. Does anyone remember Recess? Probably do, so let's just dive into what made this show so tender. Need lots of coffee before I do this. Why am I screaming? My viewers don't want me to scream at them. So the show was created by Paul Germain and Joe Annalisabella here. They're credited as Paul and Joe. That's all you need to know. It was produced by Walt Disney Television Animation with an animation done by Plus One Animation, Sun Wu Animation, and Toon City. So Recess first premiered way back in 1997 and it later ended in 2001. The last season of the show ran short because it hit its 65th episode. Disney has a rule regarding how many episodes a show can have, so it was ended then with the season being short. After the season aired, ABC noticed how high the ratings were for the reruns and wanted to order more episodes in the 2002 to 2003 season. However, Disney declined in mid-production, leaving three of the episodes to go direct to video as Recess taking the fifth grade. For unknown reasons, ABC and Disney Channel did not include the season in the rerun rotation. These episodes did not appear on Toon City till 2006. Many fans believe this is due to Disney having issues locating the episode masters for the season. It's interesting to me that Recess is so widely popular since I was reading online about how the show creators Paul and Joe admitted that they don't actually know how to draw. Neither of us can draw at all. Because of this, Recess is a really script-driven cartoon. I think this is one of the reasons the show was so well-received by people. The lines felt clever and refreshingly unique. Recess was one of the first Disney Channel shows to bring in more creator-driven shows. It started out as an experiment and since the success of Recess helped pave the way for creator-driven shows such as Gravity Falls, Phineas and Ferb, Star vs. The Forces of Evil. Also, total side note before we start the review, as I mentioned before, there are a couple movies, but I never really saw them growing up because at that time your parents either randomly bought you the movie, it was playing on TV, or you would rent it out. And I'm pretty sure my older sister would have dictated the majority of movies growing up. We ended up watching movies like Titanic and Glitter. <laughs> Very mature. <laughs> so cartoons were usually chosen by me because my older sister would sleep in and I would wake up early. My younger sister unfortunately had to deal with whatever I chose. Sorry Lee. <laughs> anyway, Recess was one of my favorite shows to watch growing up. I like that it wasn't just a show for boys and it wasn't just a show for girls. It wasn't just for your like your younger sibling or just your older sibling. There's a four year age gap between me and my younger sister so it's pretty amazing that we could come to a conclusion on what to watch considering that I was 10 at the time and she was six. Even when discussing the show with my family, my mom mentioned that she really thought the show was creative and remembered it for being really funny. So what is the show about? The show follows six fourth grade students. We have TJ who's a group leader and the mischievous one. We have Vince, the athletic one with an ego. We have Mikey who's a sensitive soul and he likes to eat because that's a personality trait. Gus who is a new kid who moved about 12 times. Gretchen who's a token nerdy girl and Spinelli who's a token tough girl. The show centers around these six main characters and their interactions with the other elementary students and teachers as they go through the fourth grade. It usually follows them around recess, the most social time in North American tradition and educational schooling. During the recess break, it shows how the children have formed their own society, they have a government system and class structure. It's fucking brilliant. If you haven't seen the show at all, all you need to do is go back and watch the opening theme. It's a really fun opening theme. It's not a pop song. Sorry, Hannah Montana, you know I love you. It shows the characters and the recess society really well. Kids just being kids, there's the weird kids, the nerdy kids, athletic kids, the mischievous kids, etc. There are so many different types of kids. I was reading online that the main characters of Recess are based on people that the creators Paul and Joe knew growing up. Growing up? Did I say that right? Is that conjugated correctly? Why do I think that's wrong? It sounds so wrong. Basically, I think that's why the characters work so well in the show because they have unique personalities. Even their clothing is super unique and you can recognize it. Spinelli was based on a classmate that shares the name of the real life counterpart. Paul and Joe stated that the real Spinelli was the coolest person they knew, thus making her fictional character a natural inclusion in the show. TJ was based on a friend that Joe had growing up named JP Heck. TJ's real name in the show was gonna be PJ based on Paul and Joe, but later they kind of just adapted it to TJ. Gretchen's real life counterpart is Paul's wife Beatrice. They first met when they were kids, which is kind of romantic. Aww. Paul's other friend in elementary school 
was immortalized into the show as Vince. Joe's little brother Louie was also added into the show in the form of the lovable giant Mikey. Why must we compete? Are there no games without winners and losers? The final member of the gang, Gus, is a reflection of how Joe and Paul see themselves. Okay, the plot. <laughs> There's so many good episodes that I can recall off the top of my head and they're actually unreal. I think since the show is heavily centered around the script, the plot has to be good. I like how multi-dimensional the characters are, but they still feel like distinct personalities. I love that no character is perfect and they're all composed of different things that make them happy and also bother them. Because there are so many great episodes, I'm just gonna go through a couple of my personal favorites. So the first episode I would like to talk about is called My Big Brother Chad, and this episode is centered around Vince. Most of the episodes are centered around TJ being the main character, but this one was centered around Vince. Basically, the episode starts with Vince standing up to some fifth graders for a group of kids getting bullied. The bullies back down once Vince stands up to them, and everyone on the playground talks about how cool Vince is. It is later revealed that Vince does those things because he looks up to his older brother Chad, who he claims is the coolest person he knows. Everyone in the group agrees and recalls a time Chad did something cool. Later in that episode, Chad ends up picking up Vince from school and it's revealed that he's a geek. Everyone is shocked because they remembered him as this cool guy. The only person who doesn't see him as a nerd is Vince, which later the gang explains to him that he is indeed geeky. At first Vince denies this and then slowly recognizes that his brother is indeed a geek. Then Vince starts to worry about if he will become like his brother and become a loser. Later, one of the bullies brings back his older brother to beat up Vince and it is there where his big brother Chad stands up to the bully's brother. The bully backs down and it reminds Vince that his brother is still indeed the coolest person he knows. Ugh! I love this episode. It's so good and I love the message that someone can still be into whatever they want, even if it isn't stereotypically cool, but it's their actions more so that determine what makes them cool. Okay, all that said, this was all done in 10 minutes. This show somehow perfectly can fit all this content into a 10 minute window, which astonishes me. I just think it shows perfectly well sibling dynamics and how you can look up to somebody even if they aren't stereotypically cool, it's just what you think resonates with you as cool. Another episode I think about a lot, even till this day, is nobody doesn't like TJ. This one episode is centered around TJ. TJ becomes upset when he finds out one kid on the playground doesn't like him. It makes him very upset since he claims everybody likes him. Then TJ goes on to think of everything cool he can do to make this kid like him, which doesn't end up working and annoys the kid even further. They end up getting to attention together and end up, well, bonding, trying to get out of it. Afterwards, even though they still had fun, the kid admits that he still doesn't like TJ because, well, he just doesn't. TJ at the end is okay with this because he realizes not everyone needs to like him in order for him to be likable. I love this episode because it brings up some good points, such as... We all go through this, teach. Heck, there are some people who don't like me because they can't take a loss. Some find me irritatingly bright. And me, a tattoo dorky. And me, simply too heartfelt. The fact is, TJ, there are over 5 billion people on Earth, and it would be impossible for all of them to like you or anyone else. I like when members of the group go through reasons kids don't like them as well, even though they're perfectly likable and they are fine with it because they can't change who they are. The last episode I want to talk about is the story of Womps. It was a toss up between this and Chef Vince, which is hilariously written and that episode was super creative. What's that, me? Mostly. The reason I chose the story of Womps is because it incorporates kind of the theme of recess really well. So the episode begins with Lawson, who I had a crush on growing up and I don't understand why. So the episode begins with Lawson and the recess gang going to play baseball. TJ says the word Womps promoting Lawson to attack him. The gang explains the word Womps was invented by TJ in second grade, so he can't get in trouble for swearing. The recess is over and TJ says Womps again. Unfortunately, Miss Finster catches him and sends him to Principal Prickly's office, where he makes it clear that the word Womps is a terrible word and should not be used and TJ gets attention. TJ is pretty angry about this and talks to all the kids on the playground and gets them to say Womps in different scenarios. The kids continue to say it and be sent to the office as a daily routine, causing the principal to call the Board of Education, who sends over Mr. White, also known as the Cleaner, a man who is strict and adheres to the rules almost to the point of insanity. I, the, it's kind of confusing, but basically Mr. White tricks TJ into saying womps in TJ's speech to the playground, which lands him going to court. Yeah, <laughs> it's so weird. When the judge hears the word, he's not mad about it. He actually finds it pretty funny and creative that these kids came up with a word to 
get out of trouble for swearing. And he states the fact that this is made up by a kid to replace a bad word does not mean it is in fact a bad word. TJ is found not guilty and Principal Prickly in the end comically and ironically says the swamps. The show is all over the place and I love it. And I think it's so funny and well written and in my opinion is a super unforgettable episode. And I just think this captures the minds of kids super well and it is a very fun watchable episode. My apologies, my camera died. <laughs> and I had to charge it. Fuck me. In conclusion, Recess was an amazing show and it still stands as a TV show even though the first episode was recorded in 1997. This show still stands through its clever writing, developed characters, and its zany plots. Do you remember this show? What was your favorite episode? Go down in the comments and let me know. Anyway, I hope you all are staying safe and keeping warm and you enjoyed this breakdown of Recess. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know how you're doing. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye!